So let's write um, a little structure for SO2. So the first step is to figure out how to connect them. So we have two oxygens and one sulfur. And so a good guess would be to put the sulfur in the middle and the oxygens on each side. And then we have to ask how many valence electrons total? How many does oxygen have? Six. And how many does sulfur have? Six. So we have three atoms, and they have six valence electrons each, so 18, right? So we'll put bonds. That's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. OK, so sulfur and the oxygen over here are good, but this one is short. So we move a lone pair to become a bonding pair. We don't want to move the one from this oxygen, because then sulfur will have too many. We're going to take one from sulfur. He's like, oh, I'm good. I've got eight. And oh, man, you only have six. I'll share more with you. And so he does that. So we still have the 18 valence electrons. So we have a double bond on one side of the sulfur and a single bond on the other, and everybody's got an octet. Why does this oxygen have the double bond and not that one? Could we draw it the other way? Yeah, we could. Those are both good Lewis structures, right? And you might say, well, that's, that's just tipped around. It's the same thing. But these are two different oxygen atoms. And if, if you know any twins, you will understand that they are individuals, right? And they don't want you to think that they are the other person. They are individuals. And it's like, this is twin A and twin B. Uh, the double bond over here is different than the double bond with the other person. So those are two different structures. Which one's better? Neither. They're the same. They're equally good. So Lewis, structure, Lewis theory um, doesn't handle this very well. The best we can do is to say, well, the actual structure is actually something in between. And so we put a double-headed arrow, a double-headed arrow between these two structures. They're called resonance structures, which suggests, and the drawing does as well, suggests that it's going back and forth. That's not what it's doing. The actual structure is sort of a hybrid or an average of both of them. So neither of these alone is reality. Because if one or the other was true, or if it was going back and forth, then we would see that the bonds are different, that there's a single bond and a double bond. That can be measured. Um, and so, but when we measure it, we see that the bonds are the same. So what it really is is more of an average or a hybrid. So if you think of dogs, right? Here's a German Shepherd and looks like maybe a white uh, retriever. And so these two dogs have puppies. And the puppies might look like this. This dog is a combination of its two parents. This dog does not look like a German Shepherd one minute and a Retriever the next minute. It doesn't go back and forth between them. It doesn't look like this one or that one. It's a combination of both. And that's what a resonance structure is. We can't draw it very well with Lewis theory. So we draw the two parents, and we say, well, it's, it's the combination of both of those. So here's our, our resonance structures again. The bonds we learn um, from experimentation and observation are, are equal. This is not a single and a double. Um, so you could kind of maybe draw this as like a one and a half bond. So it's like a one and a half bond between the oxygens. 
But, you know, then that ends up being kind of weird. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lewis structure doesn't deal well with that. So that gets very weird looking, so we're just going to stick with this. But the true structure is intermediate between. OK, let's do the nitrite ion, NO2 minus. Include resonance structures. So that's a big clue that there's going to be resonance structures. So we've got a nitrogen and two oxygens. Who should we put in the middle? The nitrogen. We'll put oxygen on each side. And we have to count up electrons. So we've got two oxygens. They each have six valence electrons. The nitrogen has five valence electrons. The negative charge tells me I need to add one more. So I've got 12 and 5 is 17 and another one is 18. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 putting my electrons around. Can't get octets, so I'm going to have to do some extra sharing and make a double bond. So I'm going to take a lone pair from the nitrogen and share with the oxygen on the right so that it can have an octet. This is an ion, so I need to put brackets around it and a negative sign. When we look at this Lewis structure, here we have a nitrogen that is bonded to an oxygen and a nitrogen bonded to an oxygen. One has a double bond, the other one doesn't. Imagine this one saying, why don't I get the double bond? Right? Well, why not? These two oxygens are equivalent. Why put the double bond on one side and not the other? Well, you have to choose one or the other, but this is a situation where there's going to be resonance structures. So we're going to draw the same structure, giving the double bond to the other one. Also a good Lewis structure. And then double-headed arrow in here to indicate resonance. This one has two resonance structures. In Chem 3A, you will only see resonance structures if there are double or triple bonds. We do lie to you a lot in Chem 3A. We do it for your own good, because sometimes you really don't want to know all the information. We're just going to tell you enough to get you through.